You might have a device in your car or an app on your phone that can tell you where you are on Earth right now using GPS technology. Developed in the 1970s and 80s by the United States military, the global positioning system has become a daily necessity for some. But even if you don't use GPS regularly, you've probably at least heard of it. And if you haven't, well, now you have. But how does it work? The answer involves a lot of math. As you may already know, the system depends on satellites orbiting the Earth. So how do we put these satellites into orbit? Normally, if you were to just drop something in space near the Earth, it would fall straight down. But if it's already going in a different direction at exactly the right speed, it will sort of pass the Earth before it hits it. And now it's going in a different direction while still passing the Earth. And it's really just going in circles. It's in orbit. Again, it has to be exactly the right speed. Too fast, and it'll fly away. Too slow, and it'll spiral towards the Earth. GPS satellites are designed to orbit the Earth in 12 hours, twice every day. So they have to be put at a specific distance, which we can calculate based on the mass of the Earth. A little over 20,000 kilometers. That's more than 50 times as high as the International Space Station, but the moon is 19 times higher. And the satellites can't just be put there, they have to be launched. This requires a lot more math than we have time to show. So now that we've put the satellites into orbit, how can they tell us where we are? Each satellite is constantly sending signals that contain the exact time the signal was sent and the satellite's position at that time. A GPS receiver uses this information to calculate its position. Let's look at this in two dimensions for simplicity. Say you're a satellite receiver. You receive a signal from a satellite with a time that is 69 milliseconds earlier than the actual time. You know that the signals travel at the speed of light. So you multiply 69 milliseconds by the speed of light and you get your distance from that satellite. You can then draw an imaginary circle around that satellite. You are somewhere on the circumference of that circle, but you don't know where. Not super helpful. But with a signal from another satellite, you can narrow it down to two points. And with a third, you can be sure of your exact position. This is called trilateration. It works the same way in three dimensions, but you draw imaginary spheres, and it takes four of those to get a single intersection. The GPS satellites orbit in such a way that there are always at least four of them visible from any spot on Earth. It is essential that the satellite clocks are precisely synchronized with the clocks on the ground. But according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, when you experience less gravity, time goes faster. The satellite clocks are over 20,000 kilometers above the Earth, where the gravity is a bit weaker than it is on the ground. This would lead the satellite clocks to tick slightly faster, by about 45 microseconds every day. But hold on, Einstein's theory of special relativity says that fast moving clocks tick more slowly. The satellites are moving at about 14,000 kilometers an hour, which would lead to a change of about 7 microseconds slower per day. The net result is 38 microseconds faster. If this wasn't accounted for, the navigational layers would accumulate faster than 10 kilometers per day. Scientists are still innovating and designing more accurate satellites that will soon replace the current one. And I can guarantee you they're using math. So the next time you're using GPS technology to find your way, remember, it's all thanks to the power of math.